Hi, my name is Owen. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple lift bridge for under $22. And we're going to get started right now. This is the 15th video in the Building an Elevated Track series. I've included a link to the series below. Now would be a great time to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of my future videos and see how we're going to continue with building the Polar Express O-Gauge layout. Be sure to stick around till the end of this video because I have a confession to make about that price. A lift bridge may be a necessity on your O-Gauge layout, but buying one can be expensive. I've seen mass-produced and custom-built lift bridges ranging in price from $500 to $1,800. So that can be an obstacle to building the kind of layout that you really want. They could also be hard to find. I needed a lift bridge on my Polar Express layout for my crossover track. A long grade connects the lower level track, track one and track two, with my elevated track track number three. Where the crossover track goes above that grade, there's only about an inch and a quarter of clearance. That's only about three centimeters. The lift bridge allows me to fold up a section of fast track so that I can bring a train up the grade from the lower level to the upper level, and then I can fold it back down again so that I can run trains across the crossover track. If you have already put a lift bridge on your layout, please leave a comment down below and tell me how you did it. A lift bridge needs a firm foundation, and that's where we'll start. The crossover is connected to the elevated track main line by two O36 remote control switches, one at each end, as shown here. I've used Lionel Fast Track for my entire layout. The elevated track is mounted on 1x6 kill dried poplar boards. Kill dried means that it's more stable and more uniform dimensions than ordinary common pine boards would be. Between the fast track and the boards is a quarter inch layer of sound deadening foam. The boards are supported by one inch poplar dowel rods that have been painted to simulate concrete columns. The crossover track exits the main line at the first O36 switch. An O36 quarter curve section connects the, then to an O36 full curve section that swings the crossover out to form a right angle to the main line. Next, I'm using a 30 inch Rail King steel arch bridge that crosses the road on one side of my layout and crosses partway over the operating well in the center. The steel arch bridge is also supported by kill dried 1x6 poplar boards. In this case, I've made it two boards thick for added stability. The boards were glued together and then glued to the wooden surface of my train tables on each end. I used a carpenter's square to make sure that they kept that 90 degree right angle to the main line as they went across the operating well. Once the fast track reaches the end of the bridge, an O36 curve, full curve section, swings it around and aligns it with the O36 quarter curve section that connects to the O36 switch. This is the section of the crossover where I needed a really solid structure to handle the stress of raising and lowering the lift bridge. So instead of columns I used to support the elevator track around the main line, here I've used 1x6 boards. They add more strength and more stability to handle the stress of raising and lowering the lift bridge. I secured them in place with a combination of yellow carpenter's glue and wood screws. You can see here where I've used the root screws to tie it all down tight. At the end of the O36 curve, in the beginning of the lift bridge, I glued together two 1x6 boards for added strength. And on the lift bridge side, I also added another piece of 1x6 as a brace, which you can see here. All of these supports are glued down to the plywood surface of the train table. While we're looking at the underside, the electrical drop from the lift bridge to the elevated track power circuit, which is under the train table, is also visible. Because the fast track on the lift bridge is electrically isolated from the rest of the elevated track, it needs its own electrical connection. Let me lift the bridge and show you where the wires go up through to connect with the fast track. 
The red wire is the positive side. It connects with the center rail. The black is the negative or ground wire. It connects with an outer rail. I have a piece of fast track here that shows how the fast track wires are connected and secured. All of the full size fast track sections have these, these terminals underneath. So it really isn't necessary to buy special terminal sections for most applications. Buying ready made connector wires for your fast track layout can be expensive. I have a video that shows how to make these connector wires for only about 43 cents for each pair. I'll include a link to that video below as well. Notice here how the wires are connected to the terminals and then they go through these clips that are part of each fast track section that hold them in place firmly. This bridge design comes from another YouTuber, Andy Konfall. He used a bridge like this on his O gauge layout. He's now moved on to building an HO layout. I'll include a link to his channel below as well. You can see that I mounted the hinges for this lift bridge on little wooden blocks. It's necessary to do this in order for the bridge to lift up smoothly without binding at the hinge end. You can buy a set of hinges like this for only a couple of bucks. When the bridge is raised, it needs something to rest against. So I put these two columns in place with the little blocks on the top so that the bridge, when it folds back, can rest against those instead of flopping all the way over onto the fast track behind it, which eventually would cause things to break. Back to the fast track. Not a lot of cutting is needed. If you stick to a length for your lift bridge that is consistent with the standard lengths of fast track sections, then you don't really need to cut fast track rails. On my bridge, I have a 10 inch section, a 5 inch section, and a 4.5 inch section for a total length of 19.5 inches. These pins on the end of the rails, however, do need to be removed in order to make your lift bridge work smoothly. To remove the pins, simply fold up these little metal tabs underneath the end of each rail. Once you fold up those tabs, the pins are held in place by these little metal studs that protrude down underneath. It's necessary to move those studs up in order to get the fast track pin to come out. To do that, I used the vice grip pliers and simply bent down on the end of the pin here and here, and that raised up the opposite end so that that stud comes, comes out of the hole. Once you've done that, they just drop right out. Before putting the rails back in place, you also need to trim off these plastic tabs on each side, and you need to do that on both the stationary piece and the lift bridge piece on the hinge end. I used an extra fine finish hacksaw to cut through these tabs. After I removed them, I smoothed the end of the fast track section by shaving off the remaining plastic shards with a sharp knife. At the hinge edge of the bridge, this needs to be done both on the stationary fast track section and on the lift bridge section. On the far end of the, of the lift bridge here, the entire plastic end of the fast track needs to be cut off. And that happens just immediately behind where that section joins to the fast track piece. On this piece of fast track, I can show you where we did that. The cut needs to be right here. So right in this section here, right at the back edge of the end piece, use the hacksaw and cut off that entire end piece. Removing that is necessary so that it doesn't bind on the adjoining stationary section. After removing the tabs, the metal pins, and trimming the plastic, then you can put the fast track rails back in place. Just push down on them and they'll pop right back in place. Once they pop down back in place, you can spread these tabs, these metal tabs again, to hold them firmly so that they don't move on you or don't come out loose. The final item on my lift bridge is this screw right here. That screw fits down into a hole in the section below it that makes sure it stays stationary and doesn't move when I'm running trains across it. I'll probably replace that screw with a, a wooden peg eventually. This is a stress point for the lift bridge. So I secured the support board here both with glue and with wood screws, as you can see here underneath. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, I have a confession to make about the price. My actual cost for building this lift bridge was zero. 
because I had all of these pieces left over from other projects that I've done over the years. But I did look up the prices and checked and the whole thing comes to less than $22 if you have to buy all the pieces for it, including the hinges, the boards, everything that you need. I have lots more O-Gage Polar Express layout videos coming up. Be sure to hit subscribe so that you don't miss any of them. Also, please click the thumbs up below and like this video. And remember to click on the link below to see all the other vi videos in this Building the Elevated Track, Track 3 series. Thanks for watching.